the righteousness that you once hated? Do you have a growing passion to be righteous? What God has started, He will complete. If He has saved you, young people, He will continue to grow your spiritual wherewithal until you have the desire to be as righteous as you possibly can. And you will never confuse that righteousness with salvation. You will confuse... You will never confuse that righteousness with works. It will always be to glorify Christ. That's the passion that you get with the true power of the gospel. Amen. And it can happen right here. Amen. But do we allow sin to put a bushel over the light that Christ sparked in your heart not so long ago? The question isn't do you agree with that? Do you think it's right or are you challenged? The question is, is that a reality in your life? Is it a reality in your life? Do you have a passion for God? Young lady, young man, elderly lady, elderly man, young man in the prime of your life. Is that a reality in your life? Do you have a passion for God? Are you continuing to grow in your hatred for sin? Or are you becoming apathetic and complacent with sin? Look around. Look around in the, in the world around you. How many 50-year-old, 40-year-old stagnant Christians do you know that could care less what sin is around them? They could care less to try to spread the gospel. They could care less about trying to influence and encourage a young person to become closer to Jesus Christ. Look around. You don't have to become that person. But are you growing in Jesus Christ and in your love for righteousness? It's an evident token of salvation. Amen. And don't let anybody despise your youth. Don't, let ever, don't ever let anybody despise your youth or the zeal that you have for God. That zeal can carry you. Amen. Let it carry you. So it's not a question of do you want to be moral? Do you want to be an okay person or a good person? Or do you want to have a good life? It's this. Do you desire him? I hate preaching. That goes something like this. You know, you've got a wonderful life. You've got um, a beautiful little family. Wonderful little children. Oh, just look at those little cotton tops. And look, you've got bikes for your children. You've got a beautiful vehicle. Two vehicles, actually. And a nice home. Oh, you've got such a good life. How stupid is that? One of the most disgusting things you can say to somebody. What you should say to them is, sir... Your life is nothing. It has no value at all apart from Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. How shameful that so many of us look at our neighbors by their possessions. Their status is determined by what's in their parking lot or the house they live in. How stupid is that? What's in your heart? That's the gospel. I would rather be a poor man with a beating life for Christ than a rich man going to hell. Doesn't that make sense? Amen. Who wants to go to hell rich? Amen. Who wants to go to hell with a brand new pickup truck? Amen. If all you care about is leaving an inheritance to your children of wealth and possessions, you missed it. Amen. They need something much more valuable than that. They need to be taught how to live a Christian life. Sorry for screaming <laughs> Jesus Christ is not an accessory. Hallelujah. He's not some little accessory that somebody puts in his life as though it were a cherry on top of ice cream. Amen. Like some little cherry on top. Jesus Christ is the whole thing. Amen. If you don't have that feeling tonight, you need to develop that feeling. If I've not inspired you young people to think about what your life is really made of, I want you to consider that your salvation is at stake. You don't have to be like the rest of the faltering world Amen. proclaiming to be Christians, but just statistics. You can be a true Christian with true repentance. And don't be fooled into thinking that just because you repented for one sin some time ago, and you made a mistake because you were in a bad place in your life. You can't repent for that again. Don't buy into Satan's lies. He loves to convince us that we're guilty and that there's no potential for healing, for re restoration and reconciliation with God. God is long-suffering to us. Amen. 
His mercies are new every morning. Thank God. But you have to truly repent. And God is no fool. So it's not a question. It's not a question of do you want to get to heaven? Do you want to have a better life? Do you want a better marriage? Of course we want all these things. But those aren't the right questions. The question is, do you want God? And do you desire God? Do you truly desire God? And I know all of you are asking this question to yourself right now. Everyone will acknowledge they're a sinner. That's no problem. Everybody will acknowledge they know what sin is. That's not a problem. But do you know how heinous and terrible, how disgusting your sin is? People today do not want to let go of the very things they choose to drink down as though they were water. Think about your personal life right now and what you just cannot let go of because you enjoy them so much that you just can't let go of them. So you see, it's not even a question of do you recognize you're a sinner? <clears throat> Since I've been speaking here, what's God done to your heart? I'm sure if you've lived long enough and you've heard or experienced this for yourself, I have a new relationship with God. Oh, I, I feel so refreshed. I just have a brand new relationship with God. That's not the right question. It's not the right statement. The real question you should be asking yourself is, do you have a new relationship with sin? Because if you don't have a new relationship with sin, you do not actually have a new relationship with God. Sin is why you have a relationship with Christ. It's why the gospel is here. So if you don't have a new understanding, a new relationship with sin, that is hatred of it, then you don't have a new relationship with Christ, and you need to go home and cry out on your knees to God that he will save you from your sins. Has God done such a supernatural work in your heart through the Holy Spirit that although prior to that you have lived a life of ignoring God, of hating God, you now see him as esteemed above all things. And you now desire him above all things. God is either everything to you, or he is nothing to you, church. He does not play second fiddle, as they say. Yeah. He's everything or nothing. So ask yourself if you just put God in a medium zone in your life. That means change. God knows he's in a medium zone in your life. He's no fool. And that's why the church is dead. Because Christ and God is not at the front of our lives. So I leave you with this question. Do you desire him? Thank you for your time. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, let's, if we can, uh, turn in our hymnals to Psalm number 342. You're losing those.